is Monday, July 20th, and it's the first day of the reading rush, so I'm super excited to start this vlog. I'm also a bit worried because it's gonna be my first vlog, but we'll see, right? So um, I'm not having the best of start for the reading rush because I still have this book that I need to finish that's not on my reading rush TBR and I'm not even a hundred pages in over yeah it's 550 pages so I'm not even a quarter into that book and I need to finish it this week and I have my reading rush pile <laughs> so we'll see how that go again so now that my tea is ready I've decided to go outside to read a bit before it gets too hot and I'm gonna take the opportunity to check two of the prompts from the reading rush with this book The Ancient Magus Pride so it's my book for the book with a title starting with the and it's also my book for the book you have to read completely outside prompts so I'll see you again when I'm done with this one Hi again so I finished this one um, what can I tell you about it? I really enjoyed it, but why do you have to have a 300 years old Magus um, want to marry a 15 years old girl? And at the same time, they laugh about it, like they address that problem in the book and it doesn't say that he's gonna marry her right now, so we can assume he's gonna wait for her to be 18, but still is it really a healthy relationship when he is supposed to be her master and she's his disciple magic wise i'm not sure other than that which i think it's the uh, something that you can see a lot in mangas this kind of very young girl with an older man thing so i'm gonna like i'm gonna try to pass over this aspect even if I keep it in mind, because at least, like I said, they address it in the book and they love about it, so they know what people can think. Other than that, it was really, really good. I love the world building. Uh, it's in England, it's in our day, so there can be computers and phones and everything, but at the same time, you have this magical universe that's completely separate from it. And I really like this mix, like the language is very modern, that they use magic and there are a lot of beautiful mythical creatures so overall I really really enjoyed it and there's a cliffhanger at the end and I really would love to have book two right now to read it so I probably won't wait too long before continuing this series and yeah that's it for this one so two prompts checked already from the reading rush challenge pretty good right
fly again. So I have put my reading on hold for a few hours today because I had to take care of packages to send for my bookish store, which is now done. So I have more time to read after it was lunchtime. But now I have the entire afternoon to read. As you've seen, I finished this one this morning. And now I would be supposed to read one of these, right? One of my reading rush pile, but First, I really need to finish this one. I have 400 and something pages left and I really hope I can get to them today so that at least the rest of the week I can focus on my reading rush pile. So wish me luck. Honestly, I'm not sure what to think. I'm frustrated. That's the general feeling. I'm very frustrated by this book. I understand where the author wanted to go to and the decision that she took and why, but I don't agree. <laughs> and I think it's a series, so maybe it's gonna be better in book two, but yeah, I just got so frustrated. If you don't know, in this book, we're in the um, in the U.S., but there's a royal family. There's no president. There's the Washington royal family, and we follow the three siblings in the family plus uh, two friends. Yeah. So yeah, each chapter is one of one is of the um, the heiress, the one that's supposed to become queen. Then there's her younger sister, there's a family friend, there's the girlfriend of um, the prince and okay, maybe it's just these four characters actually. So there's Beatrice who is the heiress, Samantha, her sister, Nina, Samantha's friend, and Daphne who is uh, Jefferson's ex, so the prince's ex and we follow them like in the royal jet set if I can say so trying to navigate royal obligation and uh, modern life like paparazzi, social media and everything and I really like all of this aspect of retelling history with a royal family I really like the characters too but I do not like the decision the authors took um, namely with the Beatrice was supposed to be the heiress and the future queen. Her character was very frustrating to me in the way that she was really like presenting herself in this role and then questioning it and then going back to imprisoning herself again and when I finally thought that she took a decision for herself and that was the decision she should have taken because she's a woman, so she's already like forced to to do things that a man wouldn't be, and she's supposed to be the first queen of the United States before, because before that it could only be boys. But she accepts so many things that it was really just frustrating for me. And when finally you think, no, she's gonna rebel and be just decide that she can be strong by herself even if she's a woman, something happens and she changes her mind again. And that drove me crazy. Like, 
I don't want to say a weakness of character because I understand that she feels the obligation as the future queen, but still, in the end, she fights to get out of this role she's limited to as future queen and as a woman. She fights to go out of it and she took the decision to, you know, fight for what she wants. And then at the end of the book, she goes back to accepting whatever other people want her to do and to be. And that drove me crazy. Like the rest of the plot is very Gossip Girl-ish and I really enjoyed it. Even if the rest of the plot goes back and forth, it's not as frustrating as this part. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's probably very confusing for you all because I'm not, I'm trying not to spoil the book. So I'm staying very vague, but overall, yeah, I don't know how to feel about this book because I'm just so frustrating by this part of the plot. It's kind of ruining all of the other good aspects of the book for me. It's the kind of book where I would just like to know what the end of book two is and if what I feel will happen in the end does happen. But you know, sometimes there are authors or books where they wait too long to make something happen and instead of uh, being eager for it and waiting for it at each page, page you just become frustrated that it never happened and that's what happened for me in this book I don't know if it's something you experience too I would love that you let me know that I'm not alone in that feeling but yeah, so I'm finishing this book maybe it's gonna change after I think a bit about it and because of this frustrating thing, I would give it like a 3 out of 5 stars, maybe? Like, I really enjoy some of the other aspect, but this is just ruining it a bit for me. Yeah, that's it. So, it was good, and I think a lot of people loved it, and I understand why, and I think also that really it can, like, it can be a good read for a lot of people. But for me, it's just gonna be frustrating and I'm probably gonna go and look online what happened in book two just to take away some of the frustration. I hope next we'll read will be... Mm, will not make me feel like this. I'm gonna say that. And so for my next book, I've decided to play it safe and go back with an old favorite, Meg Cabot. I haven't read her for many, many years. So I really hope not to be disappointed by this one. as I was hoping for today but still was not too bad uh, this morning I worked for my store so I made bookish bracelets and thankfully I found out that this one had an audiobook version on script so I downloaded it and started listening to it and after a few hours I'm already like halfway through it I'm listening to 1.8 speed I think uh, because it's uh, pretty easy to understand and honestly, I'm so happy I took this one out of my shelves because I'm really enjoying it. It has everything I remembered and loved from Meg Cabot's writing. So we have all the humor, that's my favorite part. Like, the way she writes is hilarious. Then we have all the sassiness in her characters. Suze is a great uh, main character and I love to be in her head and see how she's thinking. 
and we also have the kind of thrillery murder mystery part with the goats so overall I'm really really uh, liking this one and I'm happy I picked it after it has been on my shelf for like three years yay then after that I did not read much because I was watching Unsolved Mysteries which is a documentary that looks at unsolved pop famous cases uh, like murders or disappearance I watched like two or three episodes two and then I watched Sweet Magnolias which is a kind of a feel-good series with the actress from Drop Dead Diva it's because I saw her in it that I wanted to try it and I'm not disappointed I really like the vibe it's kind of Gilmore Girl, Heart of Dixies and a few other series of that genre and I'm really liking the small town vibe and the self-made woman and all of that so I've watched three episodes and I'm really excited to continue with this series but after that I was like okay you need to read a bit so I started my new physical book and it's Love is for Losers so I'm only 30 pages in I can tell you too much about it but so far so good we're basically uh, following a 15 years old who decided that love sucks and she doesn't want it in her life at all so we're like following her social experiment regarding love and relationship I would say in a way because it's like we're in her diary you can see it like that every day with an entry and a hashtag so it's a very interesting way to write and read a book it's really like we're in her head and there's no filter so it feels very natural to read it like that also uh, it happens in the UK so the vocabulary is quite different from the US English one I'm used to that's interesting too and I can really imagine the English accent of the characters in the book so yeah it's interesting it's a good start we'll see uh, where it will lead now I also marked a few of my favorite parts that I thought were the funniest I'm gonna read one to you I was just like I will never fall in love and what a stupid expression that is in the first place to fall in love like you fall into a ditch or something maybe people need to look where they're going that was one I really enjoyed and there's another one here everything I own is black featuring designer cat hair and I really can relate to that because I don't have only black but I do have cat hairs everywhere and the last one <laughs> yeah so this is about a Valentine's Day card should I make a card for Polly just in case she got one for me I could use watercolors but instead of water I'll use my own tears lol so definitely all the emotional storm you can go through when you're a teenager and all the sass are there so it's very funny like you can really see a 15 year old write all of that I'm really curious to see where it will lead and how it will end so that's it for today and I'll see you again tomorrow with hopefully more reading done but I'm not sure because I'm working tomorrow anyway we'll see Hi everyone, so this is day 3 of the reading rush. I just finished working for the day and to be honest I have a bit of a headache I think because of the AC and I don't know if you have that too but if I stay too long with AC I just get headaches but anyway we're gonna try to take a break eat some chocolate, drink some tea watch some of the Sweet Magnolia series and then I'll see if I have the motivation to read if not that's okay I don't want to pressure myself too much either but uh, right now I wanted to show you some book mail I received the first one is a graphic novel it's in French it's about the Grémier sisters who are uncovering a mysterious artifact I don't know much else about it but I was already quite intrigued with this cover and the art in the book is really really beautiful I've started reading again graphic novels like around a year ago maybe or even less and I don't know why I stopped because I really enjoy it and I've loved almost all of the one I've read so far do you read graphic novels and comics too or are you more like a 
novel and fiction uh, kind of reader. I'm curious to know that. Second one I received is the fifth book of the Spell Slinger series by Sebastian Castell. That's his name, De Castell. Sorry, uh, it's a he's a Canadian author actually. So yeah, this is the French cover, and I really, really love the works that's done there. The English cover are really beautiful as well. They are like uh, card covers with the face up and down. And they're really beautiful but I think the work on the French cover is also really well done and this is one of my favorite and underrated series out there it's very funny the magic system is super interesting and I really love the characters too so if you haven't read that I really recommend you add it to your TBR and this is the one that just came out in French in June I think it was pushed with COVID but yeah it's the last one that came out in French and then we have a book that was sent to me by Harper Collins Teen, I think, and it's Jackie and Maria. It's historical fiction that's based on uh, the history between Jackie Kennedy and Maria Callas. I don't know the details exactly, but when I read that it will be how they were rivals but maybe also lovers and that kind of thing i really wanted to try this historical fiction so i think it's going to be perfect to read this summer maybe near a pool let's keep hope this might still happen and i'll let you know what i think about it also let me know if you've heard about it because i haven't seen it around very much so yeah let me know if you heard this one was coming out well, that's it for my book mail for today. I think it's already enough and hopefully I'll see you soon and when I see you I'll have done more reading. Hi everyone, it's me again. So I th was uh, looking at Books and Lala's uh, last vlog on the Reading Rush and on it she's doing the Reading Rush GIF challenge. So I thought it could be fun to do it too with you. So I'm going to be recording on my phone while doing it. So the first GIF I have to use is your reading fuel. For me, that's easy. It's tea. And I'm going to get this one here. Color of your birthstone. For mine, we said rubies. So red here. Favorite genre. So that's fantasy, but I'm not sure what would come? Unicorns. Hmm. Fantasia. Oh, there's fantasy here, but I don't like it. It's too forward. Mm hmm. Okay, maybe I should pick fantasy. No, oh, I'm gonna get the flying unicorn. That's much better. Favorite reading spot. Well, I love this couch I'm on right now, but my favorite, favorite one is my bed. We're gonna take a comfy bed. Ooh, I like this one. Title of your current read. So I have two. I have Remembrance and I have Love is for Losers. Can I have something with... <laughs> okay, we're gonna do two for this one okay we're gonna add love and here I think that's pretty good yeah and then favorite book to movie adaptation that's always gonna be Lord of the Rings Oops. I don't know how to write this looks like a big donut we're gonna take a photo. Here we go! That will be my Reading Rush GIF challenge.